Hi, everyone. And thanks for joining me today on this Fusion 360 webinar. My name is Kieran Gill, and I'm a technical consultant here at Autodesk. Today, we'll be looking at why Steep and Shallow is a reason to upgrade to the Fusion 360 machining extension. Let's first have a look at what we're going to be talking about today. First of all, I'll give you an introduction about myself, what I've done, and what I do. Next, we'll look at a broad overarching theme of why the extensions exist. We'll take one level deeper and we'll look at the machining extension under the magnifying glass. We'll focus on the core versus the machining extension functionality, and then one level deeper to focus on the steep and shallow strategy. My challenge to you today is to try and convince you why I think steep and shallow is a reason enough on its own for you to part with your cash and upgrade to, to the machining extension in Fusion 360. Lastly, we'll have a look at the summary of what we've spoken about, and then how about you can go get, how you can go about getting access to the to the content. We do have a colleague monitoring the chat, so do feel free to ask your questions in the chat window, and I'll deal with them as soon as we get to the end. So a little bit about me. I got my mechanical engineering degree from Oxford Brookes University. Part of my early career involved machining dental implants, orthotics, and prosthetics on various CNC machines. In 2011, I joined Dalchem and the international support team, participating in both pre-sales, post-sales, as well as customer support customization. Following the acquisition of Dalcam by Autodesk in 2014, I joined the customer engagement organization and the larger Fusion 360 team. And I'm now in my 10th year of service at Autodesk. Let's now focus on the broad overarching themes of why we created the extensions and why they're beneficial to you. Number one, extend your platform by eliminating disconnected tools and costly deployment overheads by extending your workflows with specialized technologies in one platform. Number two, simplify your machining processes to improve operational efficiency with automated and optimized workflows across teams to increase manufacturing throughput and reduce time to market. Number three, make innovating easier. Increase innovation with access to new capabilities that remove non-value added processes and enhance collaboration for easier deployment of smart products. Let's now take a deeper dive into why we created the machining extension and why again it's beneficial to you. Number one, simplify and automate CAM programming by automating your CNC machining workflows, reducing programming time, removing repetitive tasks, and reducing errors. Number two, reduce cycle times with specialist technology that improves your CNC machines and utilization. And number three, better quality parts by unlocking advanced machining strategies to improve the performance of your CNC machines. Better surface finish, less manual finishing equals better parts. Let's now have a look at the core 360 offering versus that found in the machining extension. Over the next couple of days, you will see different webinars touching on various aspects of the machining extension. Some of those will focus on inspection. Some of those will focus on four axis rotary as part of the milling or machining extension. Today, however, as previously described, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the steep and shallow strategy. Let's dump, let's jump directly into the product. Now I'm condensing about 30 minutes of content into 12 minutes. So if it does feel rushed, it is. But if you have any follow-up questions, then feel free to ask them in the chat window and we'll pick them up later. So why do we have steep and shallow? It was one of the first tool paths we brought across from PowerMill. Analytics at the time told us it was the fifth most used strategy, the third most used finishing strategy, and the top strategy in PowerMill for which there was no like-for-like -like comparison inside of Fusion. Steep and Shallow is a single toolpath, which can machine all of the surfaces on complex 3D forms. So how does that differ from any of the other strategies, like, for example, Contour, Parallel, or Scallop already inside of Fusion 360? Well, let me show you. Let's now have a look at this part on the screen. This is a nose cone of a Formula One vehicle. Let's dive into that nose cone. 
and look at contour style strategies. For those of you from Power Mill, contour style strategies are very reminiscent of the constant set strategy. They're very good for steep areas, but when it comes to the shallower regions, they do a very poor job. Conversely, parallel or raster does a really good job at the shallower regions, but a poor job in the steeper regions. Even something like, for example, a 3D offset toolpath, like, for example, Scallop, doesn't give good results. It can sometimes plunge down vertical walls, and this is far from ideal. Steep and shallow, on the other hand, allows us to create a set of parameters for the steeper regions and another set of parameters to the shallower regions. For those of you who do know Fusion, you'll know that we could already do contour, we could already do parallel, and we could already do scallop. And we could also apply them to different areas on the model, and we can apply them to the steeper and the shallower areas of this model. So why did we bring steep and shallow across? Well, further analytics told us that steep and shallow offered significant improvements over the toolpaths like contour, parallel, and scallop. And I'd like to show you some of those toolpaths now. Let's have a look at the scallop toolpath and zoom in on that toolpath. The first thing to notice with a scallop toolpath is just how the boundaries are being defined between the steep and the shallow regions. In the scallop strategy, it uses the underlying 3D triangle model to define the toolpath. As a result, we end up with these wavy, jagged like transitions in the toolpath. In steep and shallow, we use the underlying surfaces of the model. This has the effect that we have a very smooth toolpath, less change in direction, resulting in a better quality surface finish on our part. Let's have a look at that scallop toolpath again. As this is a 3D offset style strategy, those offsets collapse from the, collapse from the outside in. And as they collapse, they form sharp corners. Those sharp corners have a situation where the tool decelerates and reaccelerates outside out, out of that corner. This can often leave cutter marks on the parts and a poor quality surface finish. With steep and shallow, we smoothen out those sharp corners so we have a nice transition when changing direction. This leads to less hand finishing afterwards and creates a better quality surface finish on the part. Let's jump back to that scallop tool path. With those particular sharp corners in these offsets, we often have a situation where the machining conditions far exceeds the program step over. When that happens, we have a cusp of material that's left in those corners or the apex of those corners. This requires us to go and hand finish this part afterwards, as well as polish the part. With steep and shallow, we apply a pencil trace through those apexes to remove that cusp of material, making post-processing of this part less and giving us a better surface finish on this part. Let's now look at the overview again of this part and let's focus on the pocket region. Here, we have a scallop style strategy. We have a scallop strategy. And if I turn on the leads and links, what we'll notice are these elegant step or elegant links across the part. As the tool steps over these individual segments, it leaves a cutter mark on the part. This requires extra hand finishing and post-processing on this part. With steep and shallow, we have a continuous spiral on the toolpath. This means we have a more efficient toolpath and a better surface finish once we've machined it. Let's now have a look at the machining of steep areas. For example, let's have a look at this wall area. With steep and shallow area, with steep and shallow, when we machine a pocket, we can often have instances where the tool will get close to a wall and potentially with the shank, mark, the, mark the, the vertical wall or the steep area of that wall. With steep and shallow, we can apply a offset to that tool path to make it stand off from the wall. This means we have a better surface finish on that vertical wall and we don't mark the part requiring subsequent um, post-processing afterwards. Let's now look at the overlap. With steep and shallow, we have an overlap distance between the steep regions and the shallow regions. The last thing we want is for the steep regions to end where the shallow regions begin, and conversely, for the shallow regions to end where the steep ones begin.
We're steep and shallow, we can apply a blend or a, a overlap between the two distance. So we end up with a nice smooth tool, tool path, which gives us a better surface finish as it's blended between the two areas. Next, let's look at automatic parallel angle. Here, steep and shallow automatically recognizes the longest aspect of the toolpath and then auto readjusts the toolpath segments to go along the longest aspect of, of, of the surface. This means we have improved programming time, but also we have more efficient tool, uh, toolpath machining time or tool machining time. Let's now jump over to some five axis toolpath and I'm just going to simulate the strategy. Now, steep and shallow is also fully five axis capable with all tool types. So we're not restricted to ball end mills. The five axis technology here is smooth and avoids collisions where otherwise subsequent three plus two operations would be required to finish the part. This saves time, saves programmer time and gives a better overall surface finish. Let's jump back to the presentation. So let's recap. For finishing and programming of feature-rich freeform parts, this can be a time-consuming activity where you are experiencing, where you are experimenting with different tool paths to get the right result. With Fusion, Steep and Shallow allows us to do this very, very easily with one tool path. Allows us, it allows us to machine the steep areas as well as the shallow areas all in one go with one tool path. Let's recap on some of those benefits. One of those benefits is automatic parallel angle. It automatically detects the longest aspect of the part and places those tool paths along that longest aspect. We have wall clearance option when we're using parallel in steep and shallow to keep the part, keep the tool from touching the sidewall and marking the part. We have smooth offsets to maintain smooth machine movements and give us a better surface finish. And lastly, to remove that cusp out of those apexes, we have a pencil line trace which goes through those apexes and removes the cusp and the need for post-processing and polishing. I'd like to now open, uh, I'd like to now kind of uh, just discuss on some of the things we've spoken about. We've had a look at kind of why the extensions exist. We've had a look at the machining extension in general. We've compared core versus the machining extension. We've kind of dived quite a lot into steep and shallow in a very small amount of time. So to close off, I'd like to ask you to do only one thing for me. Today, I'd like you to navigate to the website address on the screen, and this will allow you to sign up for a free trial. This free trial doesn't only just give you access to steep and shallow, but also allows you to get access to programming automation, multi-axis machining, toolpath optimization, and on-machine verification. For those of you that haven't copied down the link, take out your phone, open up the QR reader and scan this QR code. This will take you directly to that link where you can sign up. The beauty of signing up via this link is that a salesperson can get in contact with you to understand some of the workflows you're experiencing and understand how the machining extension can help you with your CNC workflows. I'm now gonna open up the chat I'm not gonna have a look at the chat and see what questions um, are kind of in the chat for us. Kieran, where I can get more information about um, uh, more steep and shallow. Absolutely, um, we have a number of different areas we can get um, more information. Um, so my colleague is gonna post in the chat a couple of links. Um, the first link really is a video to, which kind of does the overview of steep and shallow. Um, it'll cover all of the aspects I covered today, just in greater detail. The other area is a self-paced learning section. In this particular section, um, you'll be able to go through each of those individual um, benefits of steep and shallow that I mentioned as part of this um, webinar, um, and you can follow them at your own pace. So I'll give it another 10 seconds or so if anyone's got any other further questions. But other than that, I would like to thank you all for your time. Thank you for joining this webinar and I look forward to seeing you in subsequent webinars. Thank you for your time. Goodbye.